Hi, welcome to the next in our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. This talk is going to be about standing waves and something called the VSWR, or Volt Standing Wave Ratio, that engineers use to determine how well we've matched a load to a line so we get the maximum signal and power transfer. You remember from our previous talks that we have a transmission line that has some characteristics we call z uh, the the characteristic impedance and the phase velocity. And we've terminated that line with a load that has some load impedance we call Z sub L. We know we have waves on the line, both a voltage wave and a current wave, we write like that, and that the ratio of the wave going in the positive direction, which is V naught plus, to the ratio of the amplitude of the wave going in the negative direction, V naught minus, is simply given by our reflection coefficient, which can either be real or complex, and varies between minus 1 for a wave that flips upside down that travels back to plus 1 to a wave that's, that's going back and that the ideal case is when our reflection coefficient is 0 because then all of the signal goes into the load. It turns out that in physics when you have a positive going wave that looks maybe something like this and a negative going wave that may be a different amplitude and a different phase going like this that when you sum these two waves together you get what's called a standing wave. And a standing wave um, is, is sort of a difficult concept. Essentially what it means is the amplitude of the wave varies as z. So if we had something like this and we actually looked at the amplitude of the, the waves, the amplitude might be low here, higher here, higher here, lower, higher, 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 and so on and so forth. Essentially what it means is that we don't have a constant amplitude signal at every point on this transmission line. The amplitude of the signal depends on the position on the line. And I know this is a little bit complicated and the term standing wave is confusing because you think it's a wave that isn't moving, but, but that's not even true because we've got time variation of the wave. So the best thing to do is to stop here and look at a quick simulation of what a standing wave might look like on a transmission line. And I did this simulation in MATLAB so you can see it. Hi, so here we have a simulation of two waves. The positive going wave is moving to the right, the green negative going wave is, is moving to the left, and the load is going to be all the way over on the right hand side of your screen at zero. If we sum the two waves, we get the red wave, which is the standing wave. And because we show both the variation with space and time here, this wave doesn't seem to be standing still at all. You'll also notice the amplitude is greater than either of the waves because this is sum of the two, and sometimes they add together and sometimes they don't. Now if we put two little dots on the wave, and those dots are sitting on the black lines there, you can see that the dot over on the right at about negative 0.44 has a bigger amplitude than the dot at negative 0.8 on the left. And so you see the amplitude is dependent, and we can see this better actually if I plot the uh, point and hold that point in space. So we're sort of, you know, looking at all the points on the wave over time, and you can see that as that wave goes, the amplitude varies along the line. Um, at some points it's higher and at some points it's lower. But this is what we mean by a standing wave pattern, that the variation of the amplitude of a wave, and the wave will be moving with time as we move along the z-axis, is bigger and has this sort of oscillatory character. Okay, from that simulation you get the idea that the amplitude of the wave, even if the wave is moving, is a, posi is a function of the position on the line. Let's look at a couple cases. Um, the ideal case, at least for most engineering work, is when we match our line impedance Z naught with the load of the same impedance. In this case, we have a wave that goes in the positive direction, but no reflection. The reflection coefficient is zero in this case, so let's write that down. And in this case, the standing wave amplitude is just constant. Um, it turns out that the VSWR is defined as the maximum voltage as a function of distance on the line um, divided by the minimum voltage you can find at any position on the line. Um, we call that S. And again, voltage standing wave ratio is what S represents. It turns out when the reflection coefficient is zero, those go away. And the best we can do with VSWR is one. It turns out in the case if we short a line, for example, and this also holds for an open circuit as well, that, that not only is this going to go down, but the exact same amplitude is going to go back. It's going to be 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, the reflection coefficient for a shorted line is negative 1, for an open line it's positive 1, um, but we know the magnitude of this reflection coefficient in either case is equal to 1. Um, if we plug 1 over here, 
um, this becomes 2 in the denominator, but 1 minus 1 is 0. And so in this case, the VSWR is equal to infinity. An infinite VSWR is the worst possible case. It means we're really getting no signal at all into the load. In the more general case, and the more general case was what we saw in the previous simulation, uh, we have some arbitrary load impedance. In this case, the, the voltage varies on the line in some kind of function. It's, it's you know, Vmax is, is not large, it's not small, Vmin is not zero. In this case, the VSWR is going to be basically, um, let's write it up here, S is going to be, um, let's get this the other way, greater than one, but less than infinity. And so, in close, what we use VSWR for as engineers is to determine how well a line is matched. One is a perfect match. Infinite is the worst match we can do. The bigger the VSWR, the worse the match.